God bless you and then may you have the patience to listen to this video until its end such that you can understand its true intention and uh, follow suit. My son Nyeko Mangolele, Aluta Songelwa, my daughter, Captain Zimasa Mavela, Rear Admiral Skumbuzo Msiginya, integrity is our business. And integrity, I got its definition from this particular book. If you see this particular book, you would understand that I have read this book while in jail looking for my money. And this book is by the CEO of GE, who if you understand GE is that company that has brought in gas turbines for us in the Navy in the Frigate. And at page 83 of this book, I will read to you, it is written that uh, people with integrity tell the truth and they keep their weight, they take responsibility for past actions and admit mistakes and, they and fix them. They know the laws of their country, industry and company, both in letter spirit and abide by them. They play to win the right way by the rules. So this book in this presentation, it has always been there because people don't want to accept when I tell them that I get these things from the book. They think that they come from the top of my head. I read a lot, my son, my daughter, your father is a hard worker and you have that equal same gene. That's why you, Nico Mangolele, are in record time at your metric this particular year. You have the same <coughs> gene as your father. You will understand it to be true that uh, as it is written in that book, they take responsibility for past actions that miss mistake and fix them. Discipline is such that all members who are under instruction and training at any th uh, defense training institution in the Republic are subject to the code. And in the code, that is the military discipline code at section 13, it tells you exactly that any person who is subject to this act who deserts from the defense force is guilty of an offense and liable on conviction if he or she committed the offense while on service to imprisonment for a period not exceeding 20 years and in any other case to imprisonment for a period not exceeding 10 years. Understand it to be true, my son and daughter, that termination of service of members of regular forces in terms of section 591D of uh, in section 591 of the Defense Act and then at section 519D in particular, it is written that the services of a member of a regular force is terminated if he or she is sentenced to a term of imprisonment by a competent civilian court without the option of a fine or if a sentence involving discharge or dismissal is imposed upon him or her under the code. My son, my daughter, you must understand that every person that says that I am discharged, they are basically saying that these applicable terms have applied to your father. And the reality is that these applicable terms have not applied to your father. That's why your father tells everybody that he's at work every day 24-7 and does not obey a manifestly illegal order. I want you to understand this particular truth as I live by them. It is the law of the land. Look at this particular word code. It is common in what I am talking about. It is common at section 64 of the Defense Act which uh, delineates discipline and then you also find it there at section 59 of the Defense Act. Section 591D of the Defense Act. So we must follow the code. We don't have any other option. Right now you are sitting in the reality where I must trust that I am discharged in the termination type of termination is discharge and when you look at discharge it's there at section 591D look at there on the right hand side corner at the top and then there at the term dismissal that is being circled right there at section 591D we must have met these applicable terms if I am discharged. And the application date or request date was on the 8th of August 2018. And then that court, that sentenced your father, that allegedly sentenced your father to imprisonment, were approved 
this particular application on the very same day, which means that your father, on or before 8 August, in fact, on 8 August, he was before a competent civilian court that convicted him to a fine, or to imprisonment without an option of a fine, or a military court imposed the sentence of discharge or dismissal to your father on that particular day. That is what the DOD personal system is telling the people and lying to them about the respective nature of your father and his status of employment. And everything is happening to ensure that the lie that is written that uh, it, it, it in terms of section 105 of the offensive behavior is maintained in the Dep Department of Defense personal system. The only account of an offense that I know that I have filled in my entire career was on 13 February, the DD1, the first doc defense document. And each defense document has got a number, as you can see right there on top. Uh, this one is in particular of the third DD1 of 2017. So, with the DD1, it will have the time and date at which it was uh, done, and then when you come, it will be annexed with a uh, list of what happened. The first charge is in terms of Section 14B of the Military Discipline Code, where in that or, or on or about 1 September 2016 at or near Silver Mine, the accused unlawfully and intentionally or negligently uh, failed to appear at his place of duty to wit silver mine as appointed by his officer commanding. The charge, second charge is same, it's uh, section 14B of the Military Discipline Code in that on or 11 September 2016 at or near silver mine the accused unlawfully or intentionally or negligently failed to appear at his place of duty to wit silver mine as appointed by his officer commanding. The third charge is in that on or about 21 November 2016 and at or near Silver Mine, the accused unlawfully and intentionally or negligently failed to appear at his place of duty to wit Silver Mine and the respective witnesses are as such. And then the fourth charge is in terms of Section 30A of the Military Discipline Code, which is false statement on official documents in that on or about 21 November 2016 at or near Silver Mine, the accused unlawfully and intentionally or negligently made a false entry in a document signed by him for official purposes to which the Silver Mine assumption of Reserve Officer of the Day Registrar for the month of November 2016, where in the accused being a member of the duty roster signed the assumption of duty sheet on 21 November 2016 for regimental duty on the set day where the accused was aware that the sheet will allow for him to be remunerated for the set day for the availability of conducting the set duty however the accused did not avail himself for the set duty you must understand it to be true that that is charge 4 and charge 5 is in terms of section 14b of the military discipline code in that on or about 26 january 2017 at or near silver mine the accused unlawfully and intentionally or negligibly failed to appear at his place of duty to wit silver mine as appointed by the officer commanding and then on the 15th of february i was acquitted of all charges and you can see the 15th of February is inconsistent, to, 15th of February 2019 is inconsistent with the 8th of August 2018, which effectively tells you that one was unlawfully discharged while disciplinary proceedings are underway before a military court. So, my son, my daughter, you must understand that everything has been done wrong. Captain Zimasa Mabela knows this. Rear Admiral Skumbuzom Sikinya knows this. Why must we wait for another month or for another person who what 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 who made sure that your father does not get his money and then write another grievance for the very same person who made sure that your father does not get his money to consider this thing? 
there is no way that we are going to do this. We are going to do this with discipline and we're going to ensure that everyone is equal before the law. And in ensuring that everyone is equal before the law, my son and daughter, you will understand it to be true that a judge at the high court lied and said the plaintiff was a member of armed forces of the republic. You see, that statement was immediately, it tells you that that judge believes that on 8 August 2018, I stood before a competent civilian a court which sentenced me to imprisonment without an option of a fine or a military court has imposed a sentence of discharge on your father. I want you to understand this truth, my son and daughter, that people are lying and they are using paper to lie because everybody is going to believe a judge. That's how society is rigged. They want to believe a judge. Even now, the people who can see this truth, they say, no, we are waiting for a judge. It's like we are in animal farm. No, if this one did not say it, it's not like that. It's not like that. We, we are not animals. We are human beings with logic. Nyiko Mangolele, do not allow any other person to tell you other false that you can see here. Tell them, hey, go to YouTube channel or go to TikTok of my father and then you'll find the truth. Leave me alone in that particular regard. Aluta Songelo, my daughter, you will grow to understand this as you understand as you grow to understand this, I promise that it shall be fixed. So the main concern here now is Nyeko understanding this. They say he held the rank of Lieutenant Major, yeah, follow this in the fleet command of South African Navy, stationed in Simonstown. There is no rank of lieutenant major anywhere in any armed forces in the world. This is territorial integrity that must be protected and defended, as obligated in terms of Section 202 of the Constitution. Come, Captain Zimasa, tell me, is there a rank of lieutenant major in the South African Navy? This is said by Judge Tulare of the Western Cape High Court. He said he was charged with five offenses relating to what was seen as offensive behavior, four of which related to his failure to appear at his place of duty and one to both failure to appear and making a false entry on the day register. It is these events arising out of the developments and their consequence in his life which, in my view, appear to have had an adverse effect on the plaintiff. And to tell you the truth, my son, the actual event that had an adverse effect on my life as the plaintiff is this letter. This letter was given to me on 4 February 2016. Nyiko Mangolele, you will remember that on 22nd January 2016, I saw you. I flew from Cape Town and then came and then asked from, for you from your mother. That was when after we met and then spent a weekend and took you on your 10th birthday to Gold Reef City. And then, then on that year in 2015, in 2015 you made for the first visit at Simon's Town at number 4 Cable Hill on June, the school holidays. And after we caught up School holidays in June, I met you in October on your birthday. I met you on the 18th of October. And then on the 22nd of January, I met you. You slept at home. I took you back on the 23rd of January. And where you were telling me that you are staying with a uh, Mansongo Nyeleti, she's no longer staying at Mahatani. She stays there with you. And then we conversed as we did. And then I bought you a bag, a school bag, and told you that I will pay your school fees directly at your school. I flew to Bucharest in Romania on the 24th, on my birthday, 24th of January 2016. I spent two weeks there, and then upon my return, or I spent a week or so upon my return, and I got this particular letter on the 4th of February 2016. In this letter, there was Captain uh, Titus Lamola, and there was, uh, who was the officer commanding of uh, fleet maintenance unit at the time, and there was Captain uh, 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 Obert Mtetwa, who is now Rear Admiral and is stationed somewhere in the logistic department in Pretoria. I'm not sure of his current appointment. They stood with me in front of Rear Admiral Mukonto, 
when Rear Admiral Mkonto read me this letter and he did not like the fact that these two captains have chosen me for this particular task. And these two captains, they affirmed and assured the Admiral that the right person for this task is Lieutenant Commander Mangolele, who is standing here before you. Give him that letter. He gave me the letter stating internal investigation from Rear Admiral uh, D.A. Mkonto to Lieutenant Commander S.V. Mangolele. Internal investigation, repairable workshops at Naval Stores Depot, Wingfield. You, 9904046 MC Lieutenant Commander S.V. Mangolele, are hereby instructed to conduct an internal investigation into the possible recapacitation of the repairable workshop at S uh, uh, Naval uh, Stores Depot, Wingfield. <clears throat> Your investigation should look at but not limited to the following previous approved structures, reasons for discontinued structures, requirement to reinstitute such a structure, feasibility of reinstituting such a structure, and you are to report bi monthly on this investigation directly to my directly to myself. Signed by Director Fleet Logistic Rear Admiral Mkonto. And subsequent to that, what came out was a feasibility study on General Naval Workshops GNW by Lieutenant Commander S.V. Mangolele, a technical support and services manager, stating that empower the young so that we can have a better future. This reality, my son, was in 2016, where the forward was saying, albeit to some degree politically sensitive, the facts in this report are not sugar-coated. They come raw as they are. A lot of these facts are known and nothing or very little has been done about them thus far. It is, if it is somewhat reported to be done, such reporting is a get-off-my-back and or ceremonious type of an approach. The incremental approach towards many of the issues raised in this report is to the detriment of the people of Republic of South Africa, their country, the Department of Defense, and the South African Navy as a whole. It is prejudice for generations to come. I saw this from a very long time, and I have made it explicitly clear that it will be prejudice for you and your children and your children's children if we do not arrest this particular deadline, my son. It is the writer's impute not to be part of the team that shapes such a detrimental future. And it is the writer's hope that the reader be imputed by the same notion. This report is not to be viewed as a toe in one's body, but the body as a whole. Due to jealousy of time towards the writer and the continuously shrinking window of opportunity, all the organs of the body have not have been noted, but not entirely appreciated. However, the whole body is in dire need for change. The writer claims that to some organ of to some organs of the body, this change will be painful, but the but favorable to the body as a whole, and ultimately arrest the perpetuating decline. Creating a, re, uh, uh, creating a rebalanced and reorganized foundation for future growth, thereby creating a sustainable defense that can meet current ordered defense commitments and to, cap uh, to its capability to respond to embryonic challenges in the strategic environment to 2020 to 2033. The expense required investment organizational paradigm shift that yields effective, efficient, and economic output are noted by the writer. The time milestones that you see there are in terms of the defense review. The Department of Defense is, a, is in a serious crisis and in a critical state of a decline. It is neither equipped nor trained nor orientated for its future missions. It is stuck in indecisions, endless transformation, and an unsustainable use of its existing budget. Most of its employees simply come to work just to mark a register, whereas some of its skilled employees are underutilized and or neglected by immediate supervisors without consequence. Time has come 
for a radical intervention if the country is to, avoid, is to avoid future embarrassment. This means that any person of authority, be it to allow any person access at the gate or not, cannot only look at a fingernail of a body and ignore the fact that the body also houses the head, the torso, the lower part, and all associated components housed in each part of the entire body. Moreover, such a person, uh, such a person of authority, cannot achieve this in a, in, in a silo that will ultimately enable turf war, a turf war. The benefits of the co of the comprehensive execution of this are a positive synergy amongst all corps, directorates, departments, divisions, and all elements of the DOD and the country it protects. There, are, there is nothing more powerful in any organization than having all employees rowing fiercely in the same direction. The writer was instructed to conduct an internal investigation into the, into the possible recapacitation of the repairable workshop at Naval Stores Depot Wingfield. The investigation was to look at, but not limited at, the following. Previous approved structure, reason for discontinued structure, requirements to reinstitute such a structure, the feasibility of reinstituting such a structure. And you must understand it to be true that I have followed that to the latter. And in following that to the latter, during an intense and fairly extensive research charged by the writer's oath to the code of conduct and the strategic outcome statement, one of the DOD, it was found that the DOD is in an awakening eon of arresting the deadline which in simple terms means that before this organization can expand either in partnership or independently, it must endeavor to shrink the current propagating cost. Thus, the conclusion to the feasibility of instituting such a structure and the recommendation to either endorse a project that addresses the, the means to painstakingly shrink the cost or do nothing. This stems from the fact that to simply join or combine capabilities at the time of employment and expect desired results is delusive. One cannot change what he or she does not comprehend. This is due to the, pre to the ripple effect towards the entire environment in which such a change occurs. Hence the report and its magnitude. To effectively achieve this goal, an an inextricably link between logistic and human resource is direly required is direly required so as to eliminate and or overcome obstacles towards the dissolution of the center of gravity of this perpetuating decline and establish a sound line of communication with other directorates that are required to render comprehension and support. This report is informed by facts which may be disputed by any person, but not based on such a person's rank or age or experience, but by qualitative and or quantitative facts, as it challenges and forces the status quo to change, and such a change cannot happen without full comprehension uh, where the writer cited no, and oh yes, such is an informed site based on fact. The writer will appreciate any input towards this, be it supportive or not. This report mainly challenges all junior officers, warrant officers, and non-commissioned officers to perpetually strive to enhance internal capabilities of the Department of Defense thus continuously enriching the proposed blueprint through acquiring skills, knowledge, defiance, and the aptitude to effectively, efficiently, and economically implement their respective expertise in the execution of their respective duties for the benefit of the organization. The proposedly optimization of the functional technical training strategy fed by 
the current functional experience, thereby the theory becomes the norm and practical becomes the order of the day. It requires immediate and directed intervention. Amongst other things, inter alia, this report introduces a platform that leads to the ultimate seize of technical upkeep equipment outsourcing and the optimizing effective way of the running of the system support center where industry partners will be held accountable to their respective mandates and deliverables. Moreover, optimizing maintenance organizations thereby resulting in an optimized flow of information giving rise to synergy amongst directorates and ultimately free commanders from the fog of war in terms of having the holy trinity of policy which is why strategy the realm of the art and tactics the realm of science which defines actions this was signed on 12 august 2016 by the technical support and services manager lieutenant commander sylvester mangolele and you will understand my son my and my daughter and you captain zimasa and uh, you uh, rear admiral skumbuzo msikinya that this particular uh, report is being caused even today not to see the light of day and i shall return i'm looking at the time and uh, i will continue quickly with the next few slides such that you understand that this report was done in accordance with the forms and services provided for in the defense force and it was the, it was the report on the feasibility study on general naval workshops for director fleet logistics rear admiral d a mkonto as he has tasked me and then it introduced it as by saying that general naval workshops was a unit on its own which was under naval base cape town according to st gp1 bravo and co-located to Na naval stores Port Wingfield. This unit was primarily responsible for the survey, repair, and maintenance of stores items held by Naval Stores Wingfield. Uh, it also provided specialized support to the South African Navy that neither the fleet maintenance unit nor dockyard has been able to replace thus far. Chapter 17, Section 21 of St. GP1 Charlie, as regulated by Chapters 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 59, and 69 of St. Log 1, Volume 1, delineates the existence of contractors in the South African Navy. You must believe that I have read these chapters. I understand these chapters very well. This was as a result of a strategic decision to reduce expenditure by only focusing on core business and ultimately the closure of General Naval Workshops in 1992 into 1996, albeit the closure was announced late in 1989 and most people were retrenched as of 1 April in 1990. Taking to consideration the scope of work driven by the triple constraints, time, quality, and cost, the South African Navy was forced to trade off either uh, of the three to realize its objectives, vision, and mission as mandated by the government of the day. However, such trade-offs led to mixed emotions of the previous generation which cascaded down to the current generation leading to the current work culture and ethic. This will be explained in the later part of the report. To date, most general naval workshops capabilities are currently outsourced via either the SSC and or technical upkeep equipment. System support center is SSC. At a considerable cost when taking the, taking the current contracting model to consideration. In addition, Legislation such as the Public Finance Management Act, number no. 1 of 1999, and socio-economic factors have momentously contributed to the continued rise of cost to the detriment of the South African Navy to sustain its operation with the absence of general naval workshop or its four capabilities. 
the initial aim of this paper was to report on the internal investigation into the possible recapacitation of the repairable workshops at Naval Stores Depot Wingfield. After a full comprehension, the findings in terms of ministerial priorities that are delineated in the DOD strategic plan for 2015 to 2020 as informed by the South African Defense Review 2014. The aim of this report is cited here under. And the aim of the report was to arrest the deadline in critical capabilities through immediate directed intervention as obligated in terms of milestone one of the South African Defense Review 2020. 14. You must understand that the reality that we had was such that uh, the dockyard has a depth D residual housed in almost all respective operational sections. The electrical sections houses capabilities as illustrated in figure 22 below. If such capabilities exist, why is the South African Navy outsourcing motors? This capability is such that you can see that the dockyard is capable of rewinding the motor and then strengthening the armature core and then rebalancing it and then putting it back together again. So when you have that capability, why must you be in a position where you are outsourcing a motor when it's broken and then at the same time killing an internal capability that makes sure that people get satisfied at work and do what they came to work to do because the reality is that the writer here in with expresses thanks and appreciation to the personnel in the fleet command and all personnel who directly and or indirectly contributed towards the successful completion of this investigation specialized thanks to pubs unit staff and sub lieutenant nozi ngubo for all their respective uh, concerted efforts as a team players with regards to the successful completion of this report and the publication thereof. The copy of this report will be made available to all those who are affected and or implicated by its content. It was 115 pages where in the last page you would see that I said thank you to the people that contributed in making sure that this particular uh, 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 presentation or report is done. That was Mr. Goduka as uh, the head of uh, AMSCO. It was Captain Duna as the head of maintenance in the Navy. It was Captain Ruche, Captain Kutze, Captain Tetwa and Captain Lamole, Commander Patudi, Chaplain Opperman, and then uh, Captain De and Commander Mpempe at the time, Lieutenant Commander Mokasi, Lieutenant Petla at the time, Lieutenant Nginda, Senior Officer Warren Bosman, uh, Warren of Senior Officer Warren Bosman, and then uh, Warren Ugolini, Warren Jackson, and Warren Van der Walt, and Warren Boloi, Warren Mr. Pinar, Mr. Havenha, Mr. Lester Cameron, Mr. McLaren, and Mr. Pochenpool, and uh, Dockyard Managers, and then Minky, Mr. Minky Adams and Mr. Melkaf and Mr. Van der Merve. Those were the people who contributed in making sure that this particular uh, document or report is done in accordance with the Constitution and the law. So I did not do a report without consulting, without making sure that it is done. And this particular report is what got me in this mess. It is Admiral Mkonto who took a globe kiri on the 9th of March 2017 wanting to hit me when I asked him that this thing must be presented to all people in the naval in the in the fleet command board for all officer commandings to know exactly what is happening in their respective units and then arrest such perpetuating deadline so that was prevented such that motors can continuously be outsourced. They stopped my salary, said run to court. Run to court, go look for your money. Run, run, run. They did not go follow any process that is in the law, as you can see. And for your father to ensure that he does not desert his duties, 
he made sure that he upholds the law and then does not apply for work anyway. And you must understand, my son, that God has indeed blessed Africa. And in everything I do, know it to be true that Papa ordained.